And our topic for today is the power of a made up mind. I'm gonna say that again. The power of a made up mind. This topic of course is based on our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success, which is available on Amazon and on our website, herbertharris.com. And a foundation for this work is in our home study course, New You for the New Year, which is also found on our website, www.herbertharris.com. Before we get started today, I'd love to do a meditation to put us in the proper place, the proper framework to have our minds and our spirits open and receptive to all that we're doing today. So let's just sit straight up in our seats. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And in this state of peace and relaxation, we are at peace with ourselves. Let us affirm, I am at peace with myself together. I am at peace with myself. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And in this state of peace and relaxation, my mind is open, receptive, and ready to learn. Let us affirm that together. My mind is open, receptive, and ready to learn. Just let that sink in. Let it out slowly. All right. Wow. Thanks so much for joining us today. We have so many of you with us on Facebook and on Instagram. And I love to begin this topic, the power of a made up mind, with a quote. It's a quote from Muhammad Ali, and he said this, it's hard to beat a guy when he's got his mind made up that he's going to win. It's hard to beat a guy when he's got his mind made up that he's going to win. And the thought is really that we have an incredible power. I'm going to, you know, I'll be referring to some biblical thoughts, but this is not about religion. But, you know, in the, in the book of Genesis, when it talks about the Garden of Eden and says that if man goes into the Garden of Eden and eats of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, then he will become as gods. The, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is really choice. Man has the capacity to choose that that he desires to do. And it is this God-given power that we create our lives. And so when we talk about the power of a made-up mind, what we're really saying is that you have the God-given power to create in your mind whatever you desire. Let's put it in the positive. You have the God-given power to create in your mind whatever good you desire. We live in a harmonic universe, and as a result, if you desire evil, then it works. The made-up mind works there, too. You see, this idea of a made-up mind is really an ability to create that that we desire. So this 
let's look at the, let's get some foundation. The, the first law of success, the first law of success says this. Whatsoever a mind thinketh in its heart, so is it. On page 37, we say it. For as they thinketh in their heart, so are they. Now, that means that there are two parts to a thought. There's the rational part, the thinking thought. For example, I want to be rich. That's a thought. And then there's the emotional part, the feeling part. The heart is symbolic of the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is a lot like soil, you know, in a garden. I'm a gardener. And in a garden, we have soil. In that garden, whatever you plant in that soil will grow. You could be planting corn. Or you could be planting hemlock. In other words, the essence of the subconscious mind is that it manifests whatever you feel, whatever thought you put in it, it manifested. And so when we talk about the power of a made up mind, we're saying you have the ability to put a thought in your heart, in your feeling nature that can manifest in your life. And if you put that thought in there with power, nothing can stop you. So whatever you plant in your subconscious mind will grow. It's the soil. So the idea, the, the power of the, the, the made up mind says that whatever thoughts you have and you feel that thought, the feeling gets the blessing. Give an example. We, are, we often hear the story, you can talk in the path, but walk in the grass. And that's like you can talk about wealth, but you can feel poverty. You can talk about good health, but you can feel sick. Feeling gets the blessing. So this idea of the, the first law of success manifesting in this, the, the power of the made up mind says you have the ability to create the world exactly the way you want it to be. Now, the second law of success says this. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. And this is really saying, don't have to worry about what's going on around you. That if you have the thought in your mind, your, your manifestation, the, the manifestation of your thought does not depend on your circumstances, does not depend on your situation. This is a powerful thought. This is saying mind over circumstances. So people can do incredible things because they have that thought, that made up mind that gives them the ability to do whatever they say they want to do. Which leads us to the really the essence of the power of made up mind. We get out of life what we make up our mind to have. You get out of life whatever you make up your mind to have. So you can live in fear. You know, there are people who live in fear. Right now there's a war going on in the Ukraine and people there, many of them are living in fear. There's constant shelling. That's a reality. You can live in joy, where you choose to live the good life, where you choose to have the good life. And this is a powerful, this is an awesome power, folks. The power of a made up mind saying that we can get out of life whatever we program our mind to get. Mm, mm, mm. So when we think about it, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Whatever thought you put in your mind, whatever thought you make up your mind to be, your truth, you get that. Everybody has a David and Goliath moment. This is a, a, a nice allegory from the Bible. David is you. 
and you have a David and Goliath moment whenever you're facing something in your life. So those of you who are facing something right now, some Goliath, some big old ugly Goliath, it may be the Goliath of sickness. It may be the Goliath of being out of work. It may be the Goliath of a bad relationship. Whatever that Goliath is, the power of a made up mind says you can overcome it. So when David faced Goliath, he didn't look at the situation, look at how big the giant was and say, oh my goodness, let me go get a quick course in giant killing. David looked at Goliath and he made up his mind to take him out. Interesting thing about that, just on a side here, when, when David said, I'll fight the giant, you know, all the so everybody who appeared to be qualified were not lining up to fight that giant. And so in your life, many times you may not appear to have the qualifications that somebody else says is necessary to face a particular obstacle. But if you make up in your mind, that you can face it victoriously, you can make it happen. I don't know, there's a lady, Asiella McCarthy. This was a black woman in Mississippi who I think got to maybe the sixth grade, had to drop out to take care of her family no education, worked her entire life up until she was in her 80s, taking in other people's laundry. So if you look at that, you say, now based on the circumstances in which she, from which she came and in which she lived her life, nobody would have thought that she would give a $150,000 scholarship to Southern Mississippi University to educate young women who had not had the opportunities in life of others. So that's why this power of a made up mind, Asiella McCarthy, even though all of her circumstances say she did not have what's necessary. There are a lot of people that make hundreds of thousands of dollars and haven't given a scholarship to anybody. But in her mind, she made up her mind that she wanted to help other girls so they wouldn't have to go, what, go through what she went through. And she set up a saving pro. I don't think she ever made over maybe over a hundred dollars a week. But over time, that power, that focus of a made up mind, she said, I'm going to set up a scholarship fund and the money came. And when she died, you know, she interesting, she had one wish. Once she'd set it up, she got, she had cancer and she was in her eighties. And she said that my one wish is I want to see the first girl graduate as a result of my scholarship. We talk about the power of a made up mind. You've seen it so many times. People say, I wanna live until till so-and-so comes. I wanna live until I get this done. She said, I wanna live until I see the first graduate. The first graduate with her scholarship graduated in May and Asiella made her transition in September. So what I'm saying, the power of a made up mind is so awesome that the, the facts don't count. Sometimes we can get so involved with the facts, with what other people say is possible, that we can't see our own potential, that we have infinite possibilities based on that made up mind. Someone was talking about, uh, we were giving a lecture once and they were talking about human potential and how you have the ability to be what you want to be, do what you want to do, have whatever you want to have. And the person said, yeah, well, that's all great. When I get some money, I'm going to do this. I want to give you a warning. There's something called dream snatchers. And there are two dream snatchers. And they are when and then. So whenever you are confronted with your challenges in life, with your experience of life, the moment you put in when, I'm going to be successful when I get some money. Never happened. I'm going to have a good life when I meet somebody who loves me. So whenever you put in that when, then, 
any thought you say. <laughs> when I meet the right person, then I'll be happy. When I get more education, then I'll get a better job. When and then are thieves, they steal your joy. You see, the power of a made up mind operates between when and then, it operates in the now. I love this thought that the power of a made up mind can do anything you desire. You know, there are many things that motivate people, but on a very basic level, people are either motivated by pain or gain. You know, you can break it down there. They're, just, they're the very hierarchy of needs that they talk about. Okay. But on a very fundamental level, it's either pain or gain. We often tell the story of the dog sitting on a nail. You know, the dog is sitting on the porch whimpering. A stranger passes by and he sees the dog whimpering. And there's a man there that obviously owns the dog. And he says, what's wrong with the dog? Why is he whimpering? He said, the dog's sitting on a nail. So the stranger says, well, why doesn't the dog get off the nail? And the owner said, because it doesn't hurt badly enough. So many times we can be in a situation of pain and we stay in it because it doesn't hurt badly enough. A made up mind can help you now. You know, Sandra was watching a story about a lady who was in an abusive relationship. And when she came out of that relationship, she did, she, she, let's just say, she gave the husband, the abusive husband, a lesson he never will forget. You see, that hour of power of made up mind, sometimes that made up mind said, just let me get out of here. Your made up mind can take you from tragedy, can take you from pain, can take you from sickness. Out of here. Because it operates on that present tense. But when we look at the law of change, the made up mind is most powerful, not just to get you out of something, but to get you into something. And so one of the lessons we learn about the power of a made up mind that it is most powerful when it's focused on something. For the power of a made up mind to really work in its most effective way, you must have a goal, you must have a dream, you must have a vision. So one of the aspects of it is specificity. You got to want something badly. Think about Muhammad Ali. You remember the rumble in the jungle? Ali fought George Foreman, what is it, um, Zaire, I think it was. Ali had not been able to fight for years, for five years, because of his uh, stance on the, on, the, on the draft. And when the courts finally vindicated him, he was still five years, he was not in good shape. But as Ali said, a guy who's got in his mind, his mind made up, that he's going to win is hard to beat. So when Ali fought Foreman, he, Ali had made up in his mind, he said, I am the champion. Think about this. What was his mantra? I am the greatest. That was his mindset. And so he used that mindset to endure a barrage. I saw the fight. We watched it in the theater. i never forget it. And for what, six rounds or so, Foreman pummeled Ali, beat him half to death. But Ali said this, I refuse to lose. And over those six or seven rounds, Foreman literally punched himself out and Ali knocked him out. What gave Ali the strength? The power of the made up mind. Ali wanted that championship so badly. Now, you know, you look on the backside, some of the beatings Ali took in those later years after he'd come back beyond his prime may have contributed to his illness. I mean, he took some serious beatings, but his will to win was so strong that he could endure. See, many times in life, you can only get to the blessings after the sacrifice. 
And so this power of the made up mind gives you the, the ability, the capacity to make the sacrifice. Because when you focus on that that you desire, it gives you energy. E equals MC squared. That's the manifestation, the law of manifestation. Energy, vibration equals mass, manifestation times the, the speed of light squared. Conversely, manifestation is directly related to the energy, to the vibrations that you create in your being, in your subconscious mind. So when you desire something, when you got to have it, when they say deep desire, when you desire something as badly as you want to breathe. That power of the made up mind creates a harmonic relationship with the object of that desire that makes it happen. So when we look deeper at this idea of the power of a made up mind, you got to have a desired outcome. So that's number one, you got specificity. It's gotta be something that you want badly. Jim Carrey, the comedian, the actor, in his early years, he was not hitting it at all. He was not getting the roles, but he had a deep desire and he was able to manifest his desire to be a star. His vision of desire of success was a $20 million check with his name on it. And so he wrote a $20 million check to himself with his name on it. And he focused on that check. And wouldn't you believe it, when he hit the top, he was getting $20 million a film. So this idea of specificity is key. If you can't be specific about what you desire, then the power of a made up mind will manifest doubt manifest insecurity. So specificity. Two, it requires faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. So in other words, there's something that you desire. So that's why the power of a made up mind requires that you have something that you want to be doing have first. The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So that, type, that separates you from your reality. So things may not say that you're gonna be rich. Things may not say that you're gonna be happy. Your reality may not support that concept at all of your happiness, your success, your prosperity, but in your mind and in your heart, if you focus on it, it will manifest. You know, there's that scripture that talks about the lady with the issue of blood. And in her mind, she said, if I could touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. Faith. And the master teacher, when she touched the hem of his garment, he turned and he said, your faith has made you whole. It was nothing to do with the guy. It was the faith. And so the power of a made up mind says, whatever you have faith in, whatever you, uh, whatever you specifically believe and spiritually feel inside, it will manifest. The third key to the power of a made up mind is action. See, the law of change implies action. It says, be not conformed to this world. That means that you can't live in a complacency, a, a state of acceptance. There's got to be some turmoil or something that makes you want to be, do, and have something different. So be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, by thinking a new thought and by feeling that thought in your heart, in your subconscious mind. Action is where the rubber hits the road. See, action is where you give wings to faith. There's a principle that says, faith without works is dead. So faith without action is ineffective. So these three things, specificity, faith, and action, of what give wings and power to the made up mind. Now there's something that creeps in. Let's think about this for a moment. 
there's a passage where the master teacher says, if you tell this mountain to be cast into the sea and doubt not, that mountain is going into the sea. In other words, the scripture says that whatsoever you say and you have faith in will be accomplished unto you in accord with your faith. What happens though is people get involved with something they really don't have control over. The how. If you ever look at the how, you see you can only see a solution based on your level of consciousness at a particular time. So when you have faith in yourself, that made up mind, when Jim Carrey says, I'm going to get $20 million of film, he didn't know how it was going to happen, but he had faith. When Osceola McCarty said, I want to make a scholarship fund. Although I'm poor, I'm, I'm a washerwoman. I make $100 a week, maybe on a good day with a red sail. But she had faith. They would happen. She did not doubt. She did not let her circumstances determine her possibilities. And so the key to the, the, the power of the made up mind is don't worry about the how. That's where God comes in. That's where the, the universal powers come in. If you can focus, you see, where focus goes, power flows. So when you have a made-up mind and you focus on the outcome that you seek in that made-up mind, power flows to it. You create a vibration. It, uh, it then attracts the world to bring you that that you desire. So let's look at some steps. State what you want. That power of made up mind requires you to know what you want and to state it. You know, the most expensive GPS is absolutely worthless unless you can program a destination. Two, believe you can achieve it. Have faith. And three, act as though it is already granted. So when Ali said, I am the greatest, he was putting it out there, acting as though whatever he was desiring was already granted. Sometimes circumstances can really knock you out. I, I was talking to my friend, uh, James Bonecrusher Smith. And I think we often have bone crusher moments in our lives. Bonecrusher Smith was in a legal fight with um, Don King and Don King called him one day and said, look, if we can resolve our differences, I can give you a heavyweight championship match. Tim Witherspoon was the champion at the time and whoever was supposed to fight him dropped out, something happened. Don King said, I can give you a title match to become the champion. Bone Crusher said, yes, okay, if you can get that, we can resolve our differences. When is the match? Don King kept, oh, it's going to be a great one, man. You're going to, when is the match? In a week. So this meant the Bone Crusher didn't have time to go to training camp. In other words, all of those external things that we think we need to accomplish the things we want, he didn't have that ability. All he had was a desire to be the champion. And see, once you have that desire, then you changes your mindset. And he says, now instead of, you know, he could have said, woe is me, no way. It's a setup. No. He said, look, I got to win. What can I do? And see, that the whole idea of personal responsibility is always something you can do to take you closer to whatever that goal is that you have. So Bonecrest said, well, you know what? My endurance, I can't build up my endurance in seven days, okay? I got a skill level. I've been fighting all my life. What I need to do is figure out a way to take him out in the first round. And guess what? That was the vision Bone Crusher had in his mind. Bone Crusher came in that first round with Witherspoon, knocked him down three times and knocked him out. Fight over. Bone Crusher became heavyweight champion of the world in one round. That's the power of a made up mind. So now let's, let's apply it. Let's bring it home. I challenge each and every one of you. Number one, what is your pain? And what is your gain? Are you sitting on a nail that you need to get off of? Well, 
the power of a made up mind says you can get off of that nail. Are you sitting in a situation where your, your life is not big enough, your dreams are not big enough to accommodate your life? Then you need to expand your dreams. So number one, what is your pain? What are the things you need to get rid of? And number one, A, what is your dream? If you don't have a dream, if you don't have a specific thing that you want to be doing, have, then the made-up mind will work against you. Because Nature abhors a vacuum. If you don't put a desire in there, the world will put a desire in there for you. So what is your pain and what is your dream? Number two, to state your dream. You see, the dream that you have, the thought that you have is the seed that you plant in your subconscious mind. And this is why the power of the made up mind is so awesome that whatever seed you plant there, based on the level of your desire, the subconscious mind will manifest it. So state your dream, plant your seed. Number three, visualize the outcome. Muhammad Ali saw himself, I am the champion. And he saw this vision of the outcome. When you visualize your outcome, you are literally creating the vibration for your life to move into. Whatever you say, the power of I am, I am the champion. I am the greatest. Whatever you put after I am, you become. You visualize it because the more you visualize it, the more you can develop a sensory relationship with it, which increases your energy level, which makes it happen. Don't worry about the how. Number four, you got to make a decision. You can have all the dreams you want. You can be experiencing all the pain. You can visualize where you want to be, what you want to do, what you want to have. But number four, Four, you've got to make a decision. And that's why in the Garden of Eden, as it said, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the power, man, mind's capacity to make a decision. And the moment you make that decision and then back up that decision with action, your will be done. See, action confirms the validity of the decision. You know, there are people when you say double-minded people, when they can't make a decision, that idea of doubt not, the moment you make a decision and doubt not, if you tell that mountain to be cast into the ocean and then you doubt whether you have the power to do it, that mountain's not going anywhere. If you tell yourself you want to be wealthy, you want to be healthy, you want to live a joyful, abundant life, but then you doubt whether you can achieve it based on your, your background, based on your past failures, based on past traumas. It won't happen. So let's wrap up today, folks. The power of made up mind is the most awesome power you have. But you must have specificity, know what you want. You must have faith in your ability to achieve it. And you must take action. You apply these principles by looking at your pain. What is your pain? What is your dream? What is that thing that you desire, that, that specific thing that you want to be doing have? State it. Plant it in your subconscious mind. Focus on it. Hold it clearly in your subconscious mind. Don't worry about the how. Visualize your life exactly the way you want it to be. That power of a made-up mind as you begin to go through this process and you visualize it. Jim Carrey visualized him getting that $20 million check. Muhammad Ali visualized him being heavyweight champion of the world. Bone Crusher Smith visualized himself being heavyweight champion of the world. Asiella McCarty visualized herself as being a facilitator for young women who did not have the funds to get an education. Make a decision to go for it and then do it with all your might. There's a great scriptural principle and it says, whatsoever your hand findeth to do, do it with all your might. When you can do that, then you can truly be what you want to be. 
You can truly have whatever you want to have. And you can truly go wherever you want to go. Always knowing that the best is yet to come. Take a deep breath for a moment. Thank you so much for sharing this moment with us today. Those of you on Instagram, those of you on Facebook, please share this broadcast with others. Write some comments. Share your thoughts. How you have been able to make up your mind to change your life. Go to our website, www.herbertharris.com. Get a copy of the 12 Universal Laws of Success, your recipe book for success. Thank you so much. See you again next Saturday morning at 8 a.m. for another edition of the Success Mentorship Class. Those of you who are on Zoom, those of you who are part of the Success Mentorship Network, the Super Achievers, join us on Zoom for our after discussion. Always knowing that the best is yet to come.